So in this screencast, we're going to introduce phase two, compounds and molecular formulas. Sort of a general overview. So we need to talk about this as is the beginning of major new sections. We need semantics and new language. So we talk about compounds. We have two very distinct compound groups of compounds. We have molecular compounds and ionic compounds. Now molecular compounds are composed of nonmetals, so everything is sort of to the right of the stair step. So nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, things like that. And the smallest unit of molecular compound is called a molecule, hence the term molecular compound. So the way to think about this is that if I, if I have a bucket of water and I go and I look at the atomic scale, the smallest thing I will see is a water molecule, an individual pairing of one oxygen and two hydrogens, and it's I can clearly say that is a water molecule. Whereas an ionic compound is completely different, has different properties, and it contains a cation and an anion. So we have a complete transfer of electrons from one element to another, and the thing that's sort of holding the atoms together in molecular compounds, we have an actual, what we're going to refer to as a covalent bond. In ionic compounds, the reason the atoms are hanging out together is because we have a positively charged species and a negatively charged species next to each other, and they're just attracted to each other. And the smallest unit of an ionic compound is what is known as a formula unit, meaning if we go and look at the atomic scale, we see something very different than if we see a molecular compound. The easiest way of seeing this is by looking at an example of an ionic compound as seen on the molecular scale. So here's sodium chloride. So all the little yellow spheres represent sodium plus one ions, and all the green spheres represent chloride anions. And so as you can see, we sort of have a, every chlorine is sort of surrounded by a bunch of positively charged sodium atoms, and every sodium ion is surrounded by a bunch of negative ions. So when we write NaCl, what that's really just telling us is sort of the ratio of sodium ions to chloride ions. It's not a one-to-one. -one. We can't say, oh yes, this sodium is bonded to this chlorine. Nope, this positive sodium is surrounded by a bunch of negatively charged species, but it's a one-to-one -one sort of ratio in terms of the number of each. And we're going to spend most of our time talking about molecular compounds. So when we talk about, there are several different kinds of sort of chemical formulas. The most fundamental is what is known as simply a molecular formula, which is basically, here's carbon in this molecule. I have five carbons and ten hydrogens. Now, I can reduce this number because five and ten have a common factor, and that is five, and so I can reduce this number down to a simpler ratio, because it's a one to two ratio, to what is known as CH2, and that is called an empirical formula. Now, an empirical formula is different than a molecular formula in that empirical is the smallest ratio. And the empirical formula are tied to molecular formulas. And the empirical formula doesn't necessarily have to be an actual mo molecule. So CH2 doesn't actually exist as a stable species, but it tells us the ratio, the relative amounts of carbon to hydrogen is 1 to 2. In the case of water, however, here's an example of a case where the molecular formula and the empirical formula are in fact the same. Because the molecular formula for water is H2O, and I can't reduce it down anymore. So in this case, the molecular formula and the empirical formula are the same. And we can have lots of cases where we have lots of different compounds that all have the same empirical formula but are different molecules. So for example, C2H6 has a 1 to 3 ratio of carbon to hydrogen. C3H9 has a 1 to 3 ratio, and C4H12 has a 1 to 3 ratio. Those are all very different molecules. They have different molecular formulae, but they all have the same empirical formula of CH3. Our third kind of grouping of formulas is what is known as a structural formula. So as we start drawing these molecules and start talking about you know, chemical reactions, how the molecule is actually sort of connected and who is bonded to whom is actually going to be really important. So if we go back and if we say, okay, here's the structure or here's the molecular formula C5H10, there's lots of different ways we can actually arrange those carbons, those five carbons, those syn hydrogens. We can make several different structures, and they all have different chemical reactivity based on their structure. So just writing C5H10, then you, you should rightly scratch your head and say, well, which one? Is it arranged like this? Is it arranged like this? Is it arranged like this? There's lots of different possible, legitimate, stable molecular structures that have the same formula of C5H10. So when we're communicating the most 
descriptive way of descri describing how a molecule is sort of set up is what's known as the structural forming, which shows how the atoms are actually connected. So for example, this is the more complete way or the more accurate way of writing water because it shows, okay, the hydrogen is bonded to the oxygen who's also bonded to the hydrogen. This is how it's actually put together even though we write it like this. It's really bonds as hydrogen bonded to oxygen bonded to the other hydrogen. It's actually not bonded like this. So structural formula is much more detailed but as we start getting to larger and larger molecules drawing the structural formula just kind of becomes a pain in the butt, especially if we're trying to communicate with the written word and you know, word processor. Whereas these molecular formulas are a lot easier because it's very clear. Oh, H2O, and I just have to deal with the subscript. So, put another way, this is by far the most descriptive, but it is the most difficult to sort of communicate. This is the easiest way to communicate, but it's not very descriptive. So, we have come up with sort of a convention, if you will, that sort of bridges the two. And that is what is known as a condensed formula. And a condensed formula is a molecular formula that gives help with the connectivity. Meaning it's a molecular formula so it's just numbers and letters. Letters and numbers. And there's no lines or anything but it's written in such a way that you can see how it's bonded. So the easiest way to sort of explain what a condensed formula is is show you an example. So here's the structural formula of a compound that we know as ethanol. And if we were to look at just the molecular formula, well, there's two carbons, and there's one oxygen, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, there's lots of different ways of putting this together. And so we have six hydrogens, two carbons, and one oxygen. So this would be our molecular formula, our very generic C2H6O. But again, how do we write a molecular formula with just letters and numbers that sort of shows this structure? Well, this right here, CH3, CH2OH, is the condensed formula. And what I'd like you to hopefully see is the connection between this condensed formula and the formula here. Notice in my molecular formula I have two carbons, and I still have two carbons here, it's just that they're separated. In my molecular formula I have six hydrogens, and I have three there, and two there, and one there, so a total of six, and there's my one oxygen. So here's the CH3, and you'll see over here, there's sort of a CH3 group. And that CH3 group is bonded to sort of a CH2 group in the middle, and there's the carbon, the two hydrogens, and then an O and an H, and there's the O and the H. So in theory, you should be able to see this molecular formula, this condensed formula, and picture, if need be, this molecule here. And just sort of as a test on your own, you should see if you can come up with the structural formula of this compound, which again has the same molecular formula as ethanol, but has a very different chemical reactivity. There's our two carbons, there's our six hydrogens, and there's our one oxygen. See if you can come up with the actual structural formula based on that condensed formula.